Now the espresso martini is based on a drink created by one of the UK's crown princes of cocktails, Dick Bradsall, while he was working at the Soho Brasserie. The story goes, and this varies depending on who you ask, that an attractive female model approached the bar and asked Dick for a drink that would pick her up and then f*** her up. If only all drink requests came with such exacting requirements. The bar station Dick worked on was right next to the espresso machine, so he promptly mixed together vodka, espresso, a couple of coffee liqueurs, put it on the rocks, and the vodka espresso was born. It was 1983. Then as the 90s came around and everyone started putting drinks in martini glasses, the vodka espresso became the espresso martini that we know and love today. Dick actually created yet another version of this cocktail as well when he opened the pharmacy in Notting Hill in 1998. And that was known as a pharmaceutical stimulant which was served on the rocks. Now all these drinks pretty much have the same ingredients. Some people serve espresso martinis with just vodka, coffee and sugar. Some people add a couple of coffee liqueurs in there as well. In bars these days, you may be served an espresso martini that doesn't contain the espresso. It might be made with cold brew coffee or from some other non-espresso brewing method. But the fact still remains, an espresso martini is basically just made from alcohol, sugar, coffee solids, and water. This is true of espresso martinis made from only spirit, coffee, and sugar, as well as those containing liqueurs, because the liqueurs themselves are made from just sugar, coffee solids, alcohol, and water. Now with that simple principle established, it opens up a whole array of possibilities with regard to how we combine these four ingredients together and indeed where those ingredients are sourced from. Now I'm going to share with you three options, kind of concepts with you today, um, and none of them, fortunately, require an espresso machine. A classic espresso martini should contain about 50ml of vodka at 40% ABV, around about 20ml of coffee liqueur at roughly 20% ABV, a 25 to 30 ml shot of an espresso, plus another five ml or so of simple syrup. This means the total alcohol content of the drink sits at around 25 ml of pure ethanol, and the total volume of the drink before chilling and dilution is about 100 ml or 100 grams. Therefore, the unshaken cocktail is about 25% ABV. The caffeine content of an espresso will vary based on a number of factors, but Google tells us around 63 milligrams per 30 ml serve is about right. The caffeine content of coffee liqueurs varies wildly from as little as 100 milligrams per litre to 1200 milligrams per litre. Tia Maria and Kahlua, the most popular liqueurs out there, are down the lower end of that scale, meaning that a 15 to 20 ml measure provides only around 10 to 15 milligrams of caffeine. So the total caffeine content of a typical espresso martini would be somewhere around 75 to 80 milligrams. Sugar content of espresso martini will of course vary depending on how sweet you like your espresso martinis, um, what brand of liqueur you go with and how much sugar you tend to add. But a 20 ml shot of Tia Maria or Kahlua contains approximately eight or nine grams of sugar, while the five ml of simple syrup at a ratio of two to one contains just over three grams for a total of we'll call it 11 grams of sugar per serve. So, in summary, an espresso martini is about 25% ABV and contains about 75 milligrams of caffeine and about 11 grams of sugar, the remainder of the balance being just water. Interestingly, the coffee liqueur in an espresso martini ought to be redundant, since, as I've mentioned already, it's made from the same ingredients as the cocktail, coffee, alcohol, water, sugar. Once you understand the important metrics in espresso martini's ingredients, you don't actually need to bother with the coffee liqueur since the numbers can be achieved by balancing spirit, caffeine, sugar, and coffee. One final word on coffee strength. Espresso coffee is, well, strong. And subsequently, espresso martini should have a strong coffee taste too. A typical espresso coffee or cup of espresso contains around 10% total dissolved solids, meaning that 10% of the weight of the cup of stuff derived from coffee itself, and the remaining 90% is water. For an espresso martini, which is one quarter espresso or thereabouts, the total dissolved solids should be a little over 2.5%. We'll refer back to this figure later on as we attempt to match espresso strength via other strategies. Now, finally, on to the drinks. 
Now, one great way of brewing coffee at home is using an AeroPress. They're super cheap, pretty much unbreakable, and uh, if you know what you're doing, you can make a fantastic cup of coffee. What they're not great for is making espresso, however, which is sort of ironic since when they were originally launched, that's exactly what they were marketed as, a portable espresso maker that you could make espresso with using only the power of gravity. But AeroPresses don't produce anything like the pressure required to make proper espresso. Um, it, as an espresso machine does. But nonetheless, we can still make pretty strong coffee with it. That's a good substitute for espresso in an espresso martini. The way to do that is to use very finely ground coffee and a very small ratio of coffee to water. Uh, so we're going to do that now. We're going to use that as our coffee component. We'll sweeten it and we'll add some vodka. We won't be using coffee liqueur because we don't need to, which means we'll bump up the vodka quantity slightly to accommodate for that lack of the liqueur. So what we'll do first is take a cocktail shaker, pop it on our scales, 17 grams of finely ground coffee, 55 grams of just off the boil water. I'm gonna give that a little wiggle just to make sure all the grounds are wet. And then we'll let it sit. Now, my coffee grinder doesn't go that fine at the moment. Um, so I'm gonna let this brew for a little bit longer than I perhaps would if it was espresso grind coffee. Um, but if it's espresso grind coffee, you probably want to let it sit for maybe 10 or 15 seconds before pressing. We're aiming for a total extraction time of maybe 30 to 40 seconds max. And I've got a pretty strong coffee in the bottom of there now. While it's nice and hot, I'm gonna add my sugar, which as we know from our espresso martini blueprint should be 11 grams. Give that a swirl just to get it dissolved. We're finished with 60 grams of vodka. Ice. And shake. Now this is a fair bit paler than what you'd expect from a classic espresso martini. Um, and that's probably going to be reflective of the intensity of the coffee flavour to some extent. But that doesn't mean it doesn't taste nice. So let's have a little taste of it and see how it goes. One thing you will note is you still get this nice foamy top, even though we're not using espresso. And although espresso is great at generating that crema, um, there's still plenty of dissolved CO2 in most coffee brewing methods, uh, this one included. And that's why we're getting that foam from the shake. Mm. Actually, there's more coffee flavour than I expected. It's definitely a coffee flavoured drink. The sweetness is nice. A little bit too sweet for my taste, but you know, we're going on the classic proportions here. Because I'm using good quality coffee as well, you know, there's, there's a nice kind of sweetness to that coming from that. A little bit of fruitiness, some of those kind of roast characteristics as well. All in all, it's a pretty tasty drink actually. If you were going to serve espresso martinis to guests. We'd be pretty damn happy with that. Now for this next version, it's not one that I'm particularly proud of. Uh, we're going to try and make an espresso martini with instant coffee. Uh, don't say you haven't thought about it before. Um, in fact, I know a couple of bartenders who've made espresso martinis at the end of a shift when the espresso machine's been turned off. The customer wanted it, so they've just grabbed for a jar of instant and boshed something together. Um, don't think they were returned either, well, so that's a good sign. Maybe it's a delicious drink. We're about to find out. So this is going to be really simple. We're going to mix instant coffee. We're going to use some, uh, 11 grams of sugar again. We're going to need some water and, and our vodka. That's it. So start with our cocktail shaker again. 2.5 grams of coffee solids in a classic espresso martini. Now, instant coffee is nothing but coffee solids, uh, you know, freeze dried. So we're going to need 2.5 grams of that in there which is a sort of alarming amount, really. There we go. Definitely don't want any more than that in there. 11 grams of sugar. And then we need 26.5 grams of water. Remember, it's 100 ml total we're going for. Give that a swirl to dissolve everything. I'm actually gonna get the spoon in there because some of the, uh... oh God, it stinks. I'm not hopeful, I'm not hopeful. 60 ml of vodka. 
Eyes. And shake. Well, if nothing else, it looks good. Again, we've got that foamy top. Really not exclusive to espresso. Even instant can manage to uh, rustle up a foamy top on your espresso martini. Looks wise, it's winning so far, I would say. Oh. Oh. It's astringent and just nasty. It's malt. It tastes burnt. Really bitter. Yeah, not good. Um, well, it's instant coffee. What did we expect, really? Um, I mean, this is a particularly rubbish instant. Maybe you can get better stuff. Um, yeah, I think we'll probably uh, throw this one in the bin. After spending years wondering why anyone would put coffee liqueur into an espresso martini, it only occurred to me during the making of this video, or the preparing of it, that maybe I had things the wrong way round. If all the ingredients that you need for an espresso martini are in the coffee liqueur, why would you put anything except the coffee liqueur in the espresso martini? I mean, it's got everything in there. So most of the new wave coffee liqueurs that you find these days are much better quality than the traditional stuff that's used. They're often taking time to source good quality coffee or ethically sourced coffee. Um, they're using different brewing techniques to extract flavor. They tend to have a much higher caffeine content, which indicates more coffee being used. Um, and the sugar levels often dropped as well. Taking one of the more respected brands, for example, and there are many others, we have ourselves here 25% ABV spirit with a reported 1100 milligrams of caffeine per litre and 240 grams of sugar. That means Mr. Black's a 50 ml serving of has around about 12 grams of sugar, 55 milligrams of caffeine and 25% ABV. That's more or less the exact metrics we're looking for in espresso martini, except for the total weight, which is 50 grams instead of 100 grams. But we can easily make up that 50 gram deficit just by adding a mixture of water and vodka at 25% ABV. And we have ourselves an espresso martini. So we'll start with 50 grams of Mr. Black's. As mentioned, that's giving us all of the sugar and caffeine we need for the entire drink. Then we're gonna add in 32 grams of vodka. So then the vodka and the coffee liqueur together give us a total of 25 grams of pure alcohol. Finally, we're gonna make up the balance to take us up to 100 grams total with 18 grams of water. Add ice and shake. Bringing out the fancy ones for the last one. And look at that. You see, even this drink has a nice foam to the top of it. It looks thinner because the top of the glass is wider. That's a decent foam we're getting out of that. Well, it tastes like an espresso martini. I mean, I think people who like espresso martinis would be pretty happy with that. I'm not sure it's quite got the, f it's still it's a darker kind of flavor than the original uh, AeroPress version that we did, which was just that lighter, fruitier, sweeter style, which you get from freshly ground coffee. But um, this one's definitely passable, totally drinkable. And what's great about it is you don't need to make any coffee at all. In fact, you could buy a bottle of Mr. Black's and just pre-batch it with your vodka and water and keep it in the fridge. Whenever you want an espresso martini, just pour out 100 ml, shake it up, strain it out, and you're done. You don't need to go to the faff of brewing any coffee or anything like that. What's quite interesting, actually, is this product comes with a tag around the neck, which instructs you on how to mix an espresso martini using it. And the instruction tells you to use 60 ml of Mr. Black's along with a 30 ml of espresso. Um, which I found quite interesting. I haven't tried that drink, but it sounds to me as it's going to be very coffee dominated. There'll be over 100 milligrams of caffeine in that drink. 
a lot of coffee solids as well um, and probably not a lot of sweetness as well it would have really taken you, you need more sweetness to balance that additional uh, espresso not much alcohol either i mean we added an extra 32 milliliters of uh, vodka in there in order to get that alcohol level up to the sort of required level for an espresso martini um, they're doing themselves a disservice because what they've basically got here is not a coffee liqueur it's a bottled cocktail that just needs a little bit of vodka and water to help it along uh, you might call it a espresso martini concentrate um, and, and that sort of guys it actually works really really well I think so there you have it three different takes on a classic espresso martini I think we'll call them the good the not bad and the ugly this one I know it's so alluring with that look it really does look great but believe me when I tell you it tastes like dirt burnt dirt um, this one here, great if you're a bit lazy and you want to mix something up nice and, easy, uh, nice and easily without too much faff and not having to handle any coffee. But um, with a little bit of tweaking, I think, with the brew ratio on the, on the AeroPress, perhaps a finer ground, I think that you can get this one tasting absolutely delicious. And now that I go back to it, it's definitely the best of the three. So there are many other ways to make espresso martinis. These were just three that I kind of found interesting and wanted to experiment with a little bit myself. Hope you found it useful. If you find this video useful, then please subscribe to the channel and like it. And um, I'll be producing more content like this in the very near future. Thanks. Throw that spoon away. <laughs>